A gift from the spirit of the tiger. So sweet, so fresh. What a nice chubby boar. Came for lunch himself. Stop right there. <laughs> Now this way. <laughs> I found him. <laughs> very, very good job. Did you see it? Cuba spent like half an hour sniffing around and I'm like, bam, bam, and found it. I've got an awesome nose. <laughs> well done, Tig. So, Mama Pandigo, where did the sense of smell even come from? Oh, that's an ancient story, children. Once upon a time, animals didn't have any sense of smell at all. Oh, <gasps> that's incredible. Listen to the story. In those ancient times, animals were relying only on their eyes and ears. But one day, a harsh winter came to the taiga. The weather was freezing cold like never before, and a thick blanket of snow covered the earth. It became very hard for animals to find food, and they began starving, and it seemed like the winter would last forever. The spirit of the tiger felt sorry for its children, and so it gave them the sense of smell to find food even under the thickest layer of snow. <gasps> to every single one? Sure. And the keenest sense of smell was given to fierce predators, the wolves. That's why you need to be more careful. There are rumors that a red wolf came to our woods. Oh, dear me. That means no more woods for me. Mappa, let's go look for flowers. It's my turn now. <laughs> sure, Mila. Tig, where's Cuba? Cuba? Probably still looking around for his flower. <laughs> the spirit of Tyga didn't do a good job on his nose. <laughs> no, Tig. He's not in the bushes. What if he went to the woods? The red wolf is there. Nah, he must be around here. Tig, we have to find him. Cuba! Hello? Cuba! Where are you? Tig, stop screaming like that. We don't want the Red Wolf to hear us. Leo, how do we find him? By his tracks? Can you see them? No, Tig. We'll find Cuba by the smell, like you found flowers. Oh, that's right. I'm gonna pick up his trail at once. <laughs> Leo, listen. What does Cuba smell like? Seriously? Like acorns, of course. Here, smell this one. Well... Wait, don't distract me. I think... I think, uh... Ah, got it! Do you smell it? That's definitely Cuba's aroma. Let's find him! Apparently he went off the trail. But why would he go into the woods? Ugh. It's all because of you, Tig. If it weren't for you, Cuba wouldn't go anywhere. What did I do now? Weren't you making fun of him, Tig? Cuba, you've been searching for half an hour. <laughs> Maybe you forgot your nose at home. <laughs> oh, I know. You exchange your nose for acorns. <laughs> <laughs> Leo, 
Mario, I didn't know that he'd take it so personally. Tig, it's not okay to laugh at friends. Do you like it when Martins make fun of you? <laughs> For being afraid of heights so much? Okay, okay, I get it now. Stop! Where's the smell? It disappeared. <gasps> I don't like this at all, Leo. So who is he hiding from? Leo, I sense another smell. Calm down, Tig. He's not even real. Cuba, come on. Go away, go away. Let's go. We have to save Cuba. Right, if he hasn't gotten eaten already. What a surprise. A kitten dessert. Leo, do you think this one's real? Ah! Ah, ah. He said we're dessert. Must have eaten Cuba already. Oh. And now he's gonna eat us. Ah! Quickly! the trail all right you've outsmarted me but next time you won't manage to run away from me <laughs> it worked he left he couldn't smell us <laughs> Tig, thanks to the monster the mud covered our smell <laughs> <laughs> Cuba! Yeah! Our missing boy is back. <laughs> and we thought you were the Bobland monster, not Cuba. <laughs> Listen, Cuba, you know, I'm sorry I was making fun of you. You might not have a sharp sense of smell, but I would never, ever think of hiding like that. <laughs> and this is Lily of the Valley, my favorite. Here, smell it. Amazing, right? Ew! Mud bud smells like frogs! <laughs> You're right. That smells very weird. Very weird. It's 
because of us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a muddy monster. I'm gonna save everyone. Tig, you're nothing like a monster. You're just a dirty little tiger cub. <laughs> yeah, one who smells like a frog. <laughs> <laughs> Skin of the sun. <laughs> okay, Mom, I'll go now. No, don't be too late. All right, Mom. <laughs> Jumpster! Can't find a better place to sit. He's a striped wool sack. <laughs> Let him be. Moppet Pandiga is waiting for us. Wow, Tig. Let's go. Let's see who's faster. <laughs> Have you learned how to run? Oh, I'm gonna wait for you over there. <laughs> So high. Tig, come on, what's the problem? Seriously, not again, man. Look, I can leave there and back. Just jump. We're gonna be late. The striped one is afraid of heights again. <laughs> Let's take a roundabout. We'll have plenty of time. Oh, of course. A roundabout. Much faster. We'll be there by night. <laughs> wow, awesome. <laughs> what that is gonna be the <laughs> <laughs> well, well. Where is it? Okay. Ah, ha, ha, here it is. I found it. All right, kids. When my grandfather was a bear cub, a tiger lived in the giant forest full of trees, beautiful lakes, and formidable peaks. The tiger. He was weak and chicken-hearted, so nobody was afraid of him. Once, a severe drought came. The tiger thought, Oh, the sun must be the strongest animal in the world. I wish I'd become this strong. So the tiger decided to lay paws on the skin of the sun. But the skin was guarded by a fierce bear. But Pandiga, was he as fierce as you are? No, no. A saber-toothed bear. He resides in his big black cave and protects the way of the stone claw, the place where the sun is nesting. So the tiger sneaked past the saber-toothed bear while he was asleep and put on the skin of the sun. The tiger became the most fearless animal in the forest. All the animals and the tiger bowed their heads to him. It was on Equilibrium Day, when night is equal to day. I want to get the skin, too. Tig, I know where the stone claw is. I saw the sun sitting down there. And today's Equilibrium Day. Hurry up! The skin of the sun? Thank you, Mama Pandiga! I have to get this skin! Leo, what do you think? Was it for real? All the things that Pandiga told us about? Sure. You heard it, man. I wish I'd become the bravest tiger in the whole forest. How long do you think we've been running for? Huh? What was that? Hey, Tig. We're gonna get the skin of the sun for you, and you'll become the bravest one on Earth. Tig? Tig, what is it now? You just have to walk on this very huge, very wide log. Come on, come on. That's right. Good job. Don't look down. Just look at me. That's it. Okay. No! Tig, hold on! Leo! Hold on! Leo! Leo! Hold on! Leo! Friends, follow me! We gotta get there first! 
before the sun sets! Should we go now? Back home? Up the river? Oh no, we're never gonna make it at this rate. Okay, it's not the way. And here is not the way either. Where is it, huh? Aha! Look over there! What did Baba Pandiga tell us? Come and put your paw on the sun tree in the evening, and the way will be enlightened. Run along towards the sunset! <sighs> Leo, look! <laughs> Whoa! I always knew the stories were true. <laughs> Tig, stop talking. Let's run! <laughs> Whoa! I always knew the stories were true. <laughs> yeah. The cave of the saber-toothed bear! We can't go further! Hmm. How can we climb this mountain? Hey guys, over there! <laughs> Climb up this tree! On me! Sun is gonna set soon! Faster! Faster! Run, Tig! We gotta get there before the sun goes down! Leo, I think we'd better go back. Come on, Tig! Forget it! Stupid skin. Maybe it doesn't even exist. No skin? What are you talking about? It must be there. Mappa said to catch the sun before it goes down. So run! Come on, come on, we're almost there. The rock is so close. Oh, wow. Look at this. We're so high. Is this the place? Shh, keep quiet. This is the cave of the saber-toothed bear. Whose cave? You mean the saber-toothed? Oh, no thanks, I'll pass. Me neither. Look there. The stone claw. Let's go. <laughs> Leo, careful. Uh, you know what? You better go on your own. Wait there. I'll bring the skin. The skin of the sun. I'll be the mightiest in the whole forest. Come on. Go down now! What was that noise? Ah, the spotted one! Hey, you! What do you think you're doing here? The skin is mine! Buzz off while you can! No way! I'm here to get it! I won't leave without it! What? You won't leave? Well, we're gonna help you! Leo! I'm coming! I can't! Take, hurry up! I'm losing grip! I can't do it! I'm sorry, Leo! Oh, oh, your friend is a fat coward! <laughs> he left you! <laughs> <laughs> I was too busy running away. I didn't notice any saber-toothed bears. You know, Tig, you don't need no skin. You're the bravest tiger in the world. Ah! 
<gasps> Sounds like a saber tooth bear. <laughs> Keep cool. That's my mom. That's your mom? Quite a mom you have. <gasps> uh oh, that must be the saber tooth bear. No, no. That one's my mom. We better get home and fast. Everybody has a skin. But to make it glow like the sun, you need to find your path. <clears throat> Every grass blade in Tiger is alive. That's because hidden inside it is the spirit of the Tiger. Hidden? How is that? Just like that. <laughs> the spirit of the Tiger is everywhere. In the grass and trees, on mountaintops, and even the deepest caves. The mysterious cave. Okay, here. No, they'll find me here. And here's where they found me the last time. And this was the one before that. Oh! But here. No way they'll find me here. Leo, look at this. Hmm. Tig, follow me. Oh, dear. Dear. Oh, dear. So, where's Mila? Tig, have you seen her? Ah, oh, Mila, when will you learn to hide properly? The same place for the third time? Mila, come on, don't be upset. I know. Let's play tag. No, no, no. One more time, please. The last one. Mila, this was the last time. The last, last time, then. The very last time. I swear. Six, seven, oh, eight, where should I go? nine, where ten, should I go? eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, ready or not, here I come! Aha! Tig, I found you! Oh, hey, that's not fair. You counted too fast. No, 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 no! Here! 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 No, 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 no! There! What should I do? They'll find me here, too. Oh. oh, a cave. I'm gonna hide so well, they'll never find me. Oh. What darkness. Oh, boy. Oh. Oh. Isn't this a good spot to hide? She would hide. It's weird. She's not here either. Leo! Look, I found some tracks. Wow, it's Mila's tracks. Follow me! Whoa. Uh-uh. I wouldn't go inside. Leo, wait! She's definitely not in there. Tig? Wait a sec. Look! It's Mila's flower! She's in there. Let's go, Tig! You sure? No way! Leo! 
Oh, come on. No, no. Oh, fine. You win, Leo. I'm coming! Ah! Oh, wow. Leo! Leo, you there? I'm here, Tig. You okay? Well, I didn't lose my tail. Leo, where are we? We're in a cave, and Milo is definitely here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so amazing! Oh, wow! Rah. Look, Tig! Whoa. You're on tracks! Awesome! Tig, hurry <laughs> up! Whoa! Whoa! Ah, Leo! Whoa. Wait for me! <gasps> Don't leave me alone! <sighs> Mila, Mila! <sighs> 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 Take a break. No, Tig. The tracks, they disappeared. I'm Help! tired. Help! You hear that? Leo! Tig! That's Mila. She's over there. Oh, okay, fine. Right behind you. lost. Oh, okay. Don't panic. You can figure this out. Okay. Uh, think, think. Uh, this way. Uh, uh. Mila, don't be afraid. I can do this. Don't worry. I'll think of something. I'm not afraid. Well, at first I was a little scared. But then I asked, and he helped me. And here you guys are. Wait. Who helped you, Mila? Well, I don't really know. I just thought that I was trapped, but these pretty crystals started to show me the way! Crystals? Yeah, Mila, I think I got it! It's the spirit of the taiga! Remember Pantiga told us about him? He lives inside grass and trees, on mountain summits, and even in the deepest of caves and stuff! I know how to get out of here! We'll get help from the spirit of the taiga! The spirit of the taiga is the soul of nature. He's everywhere! Every grass blade and every rock is full of life. The spirit of the taiga cannot be seen, but he can be felt. He's always at your side, and he will help you, as long as you believe in him. The spirit of the taiga? Seriously? That's just a legend. Fairy tales made for children. That's it! There's no spirit. You're so gullible. Guess we're just gonna have to stay here forever. Tig, wait. Oh, spirit of the taiga, would you please help us to find a way home? gonna follow some bug like he can guide us outside Leo Tig we'll end up staying here forever because of you why me what did I do can't you ask the spirit of yours to guide us out of here a little bit faster I'm getting hungry ask him yourself fine I will nothing tricky about that listen spirit would you mind hurrying it up a little bit <laughs> See that? See that. Wow, Tig. Okay. Great job. 
Couldn't you be more polite? Uh, right. Pretty, please? Oh, Leo, what are those things? Those are... those are bats! Hey, wait! Hooray! We made it! <sighs> well, Dick, how about that? Exactly what you asked for. Really fast. Right. In the end, he's really nice, that spirit of the taiga. <laughs> and you didn't believe in him. <laughs> <laughs> Not true. I believed him. I was joking. Let's go home. Hurry up! You're unbelievable. The spirit of the taiga is everywhere. But only those who genuinely believe in miracles are really able to see him. Tag, <laughs> you're it! Not fair! Cause you... you took a shortcut! Hi guys! I made a song, you know. You wanna hear it? <laughs> a song? <laughs> Can you even Me sing? Well, let's play tag instead! <laughs> Tig is it? No, I'm not. Not anymore. <laughs> Just you wait. <laughs> Winter tale. No, oh, King. Kids, today I will tell you a very old story I know about a bear and a magical song. Hear that, Mila? About a song. Right up your alley. <laughs> it happened a long time ago. There lived a bear who was very strong and kind, taking care of the entire taiga and making sure everything was in order. But then winter came, bringing the blizzard with it. It howled and raged and covered the forest in a snowy blanket. All the animals hid in their burrows, and the bear grew sad and lonely. He wandered around the forest all by himself and bellowed in a terrible voice, disturbing everyone's sleep and scaring baby animals. Suddenly, a small bird flew over. It sat on a tree branch next to the bear and sang a song. It sang about winter ending and spring coming back, about the sun warming up the earth again, about plants bursting into bloom and animals leaving their burrows to play. The bear listened to the song until he fell asleep. And ever since that time, as soon as winter comes, the bear climbs into his lair and sleeps there until... <sighs> Papa Pandiga, Spring. is it true that the bear sleeps with his paw in his mouth? Oh, uh, how am I supposed to know? There is no creature fearless enough to sniff around the bear's home. Tig, what do you think? Is it a front paw that the bears have in their mouth? Or a hind one? No, a front one. Hind paws are too far. But to know for sure, we gotta wait till Pandiga falls asleep. Why wait? We can take a peek at Beelzy and see everything. Leo! Are you sure about that? There's nothing to be afraid of. 
I'll just take a peek and get out. Ah! Leo! Leo! Oh dear! Leo, run! again if he listens to a lullaby. Can I be the one to sing? Be my guest. Go ahead and sing. Why don't you dance while you're at it? This is serious business here. When I was small, my mom used to tell me stories before bedtime. Bingo! A boring story. That's exactly what we need. It'll put him right to sleep. Leo, but how are we going to lure him in? Piece of cake. Snowball tree berries. Ha. He's coming. In position, everyone. Dig. Do it. That was so 
great! Thank you so much, Magic Birdie. How should I grab him? Gently. Careful not to wake him up. Boy, oh, it's heavy. Here goes. Hey, thanks, Mila, for having my back. <laughs> Come on. It's nothing. So, is he... Yup. With his front paw in his mouth. Mila, why didn't you tell us you were such a great singer? My turn. Oh, sleep tight, baby. Bear, rest your head. Have no fear. <laughs> oh, come on. What's so funny? I'm not that bad. <laughs> like, like mole in his burrow, like, like fox in, in his hole. And, and afterwards, winter will bid you goodbye. And spring will arrive in the blink of an eye. The air so warm. But for now, you should sleep. And that's how a good song can make... can make a miracle. <laughs> Over there, hiding behind a bush. <laughs> the tiger, kids, is like nature's own pantry. And what is the richest, most filling time to be in the forest? What time? Lunch time? No. <laughs> the most generous time is the autumn season. Oh, it's raining. Let's get out of here. Autumn in Taiga. I hate autumn. Leo, move over. Snake! There's a snake! Snake? Snake! Ah! There's a snake! Where? Over there, under that tree! Right! So huge and angry! It almost bit off my tail. Tig, are you sure you saw it? Of course I'm sure. I almost lost my tail. <laughs> you chickens. You got scared of an empty snakeskin. Come over here. Do not be afraid. Mappa, so the snake is now crawling around completely naked? Like a plain earthworm? But why? No, kids, no. The snake sheds its old skin and crawls out of it, wearing a new one. <laughs> That's a neat trick. I wish I could do that. Whenever your coat gets dirty, all you gotta do is take it off and carry on. <laughs> Mapa Pandiga, how did the snake learn to shed its old skin? Mmm, that's a very interesting story. <clears throat> Have a seat and listen. Once upon a time, there lived a great snake, the king of all snakes. But he grew very old and couldn't see well, or even crawl anymore. So, the great snake ordered his subjects to find a cure for old age. The snakes shot off in all directions. They searched every deep crevice and every underground cave, but found nothing. The last one to come back was the whip snake, carrying a secret root. The great snake ate the root and crawled out of his old skin. Once again, he was young, strong, and healthy. The great snake was very happy. After that, he made it so that a shiny trail is left wherever the whip snake crawled. Mapa Pandiga, what was the name of that magical root? Oh, that root was Jinsen. Ha <laughs> ha! The sun! Finally! <laughs> Mapa Pandiga, let's go to uh, to eat some grapes. Oh, 
I'm a little under the weather. Ugh. And my back hurts. Mappa Pandiga? What's wrong with you? <gasps> Poor Mappa Pandiga! It looks like he came down with something. We have to help him. Totally. But how? I know how. We are going to find that magical room. Remember? It can cure everything. Right, Leo. Let's go find that... Just Singji. Uh, but where do we find it? Oh, is this it? No, Teague. This is a Manchurian walnut. Haven't you listened to anything Mappa told us? We have been looking for this root for an hour. Maybe the thing doesn't exist. I think I found it. <laughs> Follow me. Oh, wow. It's like in a fairy tale. These marks are left by the whip snake. We could track him down. Right, and then ask him to help find the magical root. To cure our mappa. that Whip Snake is home right now. So let's just get out of here. No, we came here to get ginseng for our mappa, and we need to find it. Leo, what if there's no ginseng here either? Don't say that. Of course there is, and we'll find it. Well then, I'm just gonna wait for you guys here. I don't like swamps. I mean, I'm allergic. <laughs> Who's a leech here? Which one of you is the most delicious? No, no, we don't taste good at all. Yeah, I'm bitter and sour. Silly kids. Why would you march into the swamp? We're really <gasps> sorry. We just needed the magical root. It's for a good cause, to help someone. <coughs> Our Mappa Pandiga, he got really sick. Can cure any disease. You know Mappa Pandiga? Right, I remember him as he was still a bear cub. Well, hop on. I'll give you a ride.
most valuable part is in the crown. It's the root that's the most magical. Take it and say hello from me to Mappa. We sure will, Mr. Whipsnake. Thank you, Mr. Wise Whipsnake, sir. Goodbye, Mr. Snake. See you later. See you. <sighs> Why do we even have to climb this mountain when we could be at home right now playing games? And look, look at the sky. I think it's gonna rain. I really hate autumn. Okay, we've arrived. Look at how majestic oh, our so tiger is yes. in autumn. Woohoo! The view is beautiful! <laughs> <laughs> look at that! You know what I always say, right? Autumn is my favorite time of the year. <laughs> Tiger can not only give you food, but also medicine. The Silver River. Are you sick? Oh, no. I was just having such a dream. A dream? What was it about? I was flying over a silver river. And it was so awesome. <laughs> a flying leopard? I like to see that. <laughs> and then? What happened then? And then? And then Tig woke me up. Oh, hey, Leo. I think I know where you can find your silver river. <gasps> the Silver River! Just like in my dream! <gasps> Whoa! Leo, Leo, no, Leo! <sighs> this is just a bunch of moths. Come on, Leo, there's no reason to get so upset. It was just a dream. It wasn't just any dream. It was the best dream ever. And I was flying in it. Oh, dear. We've upset our friend. And on his birthday, too. Um. Mappa Pandiga, can we ask you for some advice? Today is Leo's birthday. Um. And he really um. wants to see the Silver River really badly. So I tried to take him to a river as a present, but it failed. The Silver River? <laughs> Few animals get a chance to see it. So, wait a minute, Mappa. Does the Silver River really exist? Let me tell you a story. A long, long time ago, there was a salmon named Mazu. He was swimming around the seas and rivers, maintaining peace and order and helping those in need. Mazu came to have many friends, but one day he saw a bird soaring over the river and also wanted to fly. Mazu jumped up but couldn't take off and fell back into the water. He then became sad and descended to the very bottom. Mazu's friends wanted to help him after all the good he's done. So they asked the river to make his dream come true. The river then turned silver and lifted him up, and the salmon started flying above the water. Ever since that time, once in his life, every salmon follows his dream upriver but only those who've earned true friendship by doing good deeds are fortunate enough to find the Silver River. You've already made Leo the most important and most valuable gift in the world, and Leo will soon realize that. You just need to practice patience and give your friend Leo some more time. Guys, you've heard the round one. They've gone and given the spotted one 
the most valuable gift in the world. We have to take that gift away. <laughs> <laughs> and how can we take it if we don't know what it is? We'll make sure the spotted one gives it to us by choice. <laughs> we'll lure him into the most dangerous place we can find. And then you'll give him a scare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good I'll idea. save yeah. him, and then he will give me that valuable thing as a thank you. <laughs> and, and what is that dangerous place? It's uh, the Black Rock. Wow, the, the Black, Black Rock. Rock. What was the spotty dreaming of? <laughs> to see the Silver River. <laughs> so that's what he's going to see. <laughs> Leopards don't fly. But I did fly. Oh, hi, Leo. <laughs> uh, great weather today, isn't it? Uh, you know, in this weather, the Silver River looks especially cool. The Silver River? Martin, did you just say the Silver River? Have you seen it? Oh, sure. I could show it to you if you want. Wow! Of course I want to! Leo! Leo! Where could he go? Leo! Ah! Hey, watch it, okay? Oh, I can see Leo! And the Martins. Where are they going? They are marching towards the Black Rock. What? Towards the Black Rock? Hmm, something's not right. Come on, we have to follow them. <laughs> Over there, to the very edge. I can't see anything.
Infinitely vast expanses of the sky, high above the tallest mountains and the prettiest clouds, way up high, is where the red deer lives. Sometimes he ventures down to the ground. The patter of his hooves makes the sound of thunder while the gleaming of his silver antlers makes the lightning. Being always hungry, he tramples down everything in his path, devouring entire trees as if they were grass blades. Nobody is safe from him. So if you see the red deer, run. <laughs> so there, that is how the story goes, kids. The Red Deer You see? We're building a house dam, obviously. Stay out of our way. And two, three, yeah. Whoa, look at that! It's a bridge! I've never been on the other side of the river before. <laughs> More reason, then, to check it out. Do you mind if we cross here, Mr. Beaver? Sure, go ahead. Just be careful. No, we can't do that. My mom says... No, she doesn't. You're just afraid. Stop making excuses. Tig, come on. Afraid? Me? I'm not afraid of anything. Hey, don't just stand there. Get back to work. Ugh. 
Oh, wow. Look at that giant tree. I've never seen anything so huge. Ah, oh, the great cedar. The father of the forest. Looks like a regular old tree. Let's go. <gasps> what if it doesn't want us to go any farther? <laughs> yeah, right. You make it sound as if the tree is magical or something. You don't know. What if it is magical? <laughs> Bunch of chickens. Me? Let's go. Told you. Nothing to be afraid of. Nothing at all. Uh-huh. Sure. Just a bunch of birds. Hey, what's wrong? That's what the magical tree tried to warn us about. He tramples down everything in his path, devouring entire trees. So if you see the red deer... long. I hope they didn't get lost. Oh, no. Oh, look! Look! Over there! There's someone running! Marty! Oh, that's my Marty! Mommy! I'm here! Right. 
or else the trees are gonna burn down. Come on, come on, come on. And two, and three, yeah. And again. The red deer, it's too close. <sighs> We're not gonna make it. Jump on the log, quick. Take again? Really? It's just that it's a little too wet. Tig, paddle on! Uh, I'm I'm in shape. Shape. With. Mappa Pandiga, we are fine. You should have seen us take down the red deer. And we saved the forest. Meow. <laughs> hey, look, now there's four leopards among us. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> I'm a leopard. Okay, fine. The most precious thing. Tig! Are you still sleeping? Come out here! Boom! Who's sleeping? I've been up for a while. Well, are you ready for the competition? For the competition? <laughs> well, yeah, I'm ready, uh, I think. In that case, <laughs> I'll race in there! Hey, wait! <sighs> That's not fair! You have to say, on your mark, and ready! Say, go! <laughs> <laughs> Cause, uh, you've got longer legs. Oh, come on, Tig. <laughs> legs have nothing to do with it. You just have to train more often. I have been training. Uh, like last week, uh, twice. Quiet, you two. Enough, kids. You shouldn't argue unless you want the same thing to happen to you as what happened to the kingfisher and the owl. What, what happened, happened to them? them? Once upon a time, when the great cedar was just a teeny tiny little seed, there were two birds living in the forest, two good friends, the white-throated kingfisher and the owl. The two were inseparable, doing everything together and always helping each other out. But then one day, the kingfisher saw his reflection and became arrogant. He started to boast, just look at my wonderful feathers. I'm so handsome and colorful, and you are nothing but gray. That hurt the owl's feelings, so he flew away into the wild woods. What? Into the wild woods? As in... As in, the wild woods are not for play? It's better if you stay away? Exactly, that's the one. Left without his friend, the kingfisher grew sad. And so, he decided to find the owl and apologize for the things he said. The kingfisher flew to the grizzled waterfall and asked him earnestly, Please, help me. Show me how to find my friend. The waterfall agreed to help the kingfisher, but only in exchange for his bright and colorful plumage. 
The Kingfisher broke into tears. This is the most valuable thing I have. Nevertheless, he gave away his brightly colored feathers and got his friend back. And suddenly, he realized that he got it wrong. The most valuable thing was actually... Leo! Teed! I've been looking for you! Hurry up! The competition's about to start! Everybody's waiting for you! Oh, Mappa Pandika, how are you? The competition? Wow, that's right! Tig, we completely forgot about uh -huh. it! Let's go! <sighs> Let the competition begin right now! Yeah! 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 The competitors will run along the forest trail around the giant hill and come back to this spot. Our racers are Tig, Cuba, Mila, and our three-time favorite winner, Leo! Yeah! Yeah! Is everyone ready? On your mark, and get set! If it weren't for your shortcut, I would have won. Or you wouldn't have won. Ah, uh, calm down. It's just a race. Not fair. You don't get it. You've won many times, and I never win. So what if I win this time? Oh, Leo! What was that? Help! Somebody help me! <laughs> I think it's coming from there. From, from the, the wild, wild woods! Help me! Somebody! Save me! Help me! Please! I'm scared! Please! You gotta help me! Hold on! Help me, please. We're coming! Help! Please help me! Please! Please! I'll get him! Please! Take him! Hurry up! Please! Leo! Please! I can't go any further! I need to take a break! No time for a break! Come on, champion! Let's go! But I'm not a champion! You're the Tig, winner! Now is not the time. We need to save that poor bunny! I can't, Leo! Fine. I'll run after him, and you go get his help! Leo! 
Leo! Leo! Leo! We are here! Leo! It's us! Leo, where are you? Don't worry. We will find him no matter what. Why am I wearing this thing? It's wrong. Leo was the real winner. I lied to you. It's just like in the story. Come on, guys, this way. Follow me. <laughs> I want my mommy. Don't be scared. My friend Tig, he's going to come and bring help. We'll get out of here. Wow. Look, a rainbow. A rainbow? Unbelievable. Leo. Beautiful rainbow. Leo. Tig is so Tig, great. we're down here at the bottom. Tig, he made it! That's great! Yay! Leo, I found you! And I told everyone the truth, that you're the real winner. I'm sorry. Aw, oh, Tig, forget about that! It's all good! Get us out of here already! Climb up now, but be careful. Leo! Tig! High five! <laughs> So, whose wreath is it? Leo's! No, this is Tig's wreath. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tig, first one to the old cedar is the winner. <laughs> Just a second. I'm gonna... <laughs> Train harder! <laughs> All right, I'm definitely getting there first. <laughs> you better Go run. ahead! I'll be waiting for you. Like that. <laughs> hi, everyone. Glad to oh, see hi, you. Oh, hi, Mila. We're off to get more branches. You stay here and keep watch. Uh-huh. Uh, I got it. We've been gathering these branches all day long. If we keep going, the trees will be bare. I'm guarding the fortress. I'm guarding the fortress. I'm gu... Who am I guarding it from? <laughs> all right. The spotty and the stripey went away. Hey, get on over here now, Shorty. <laughs> this is our meadow now, with all its raspberries. What do you mean it's yours? The meadow is public, and the fortress is ours. <laughs> it used to be, but not anymore. <laughs> Martins, attack! Get her! No! <laughs> I'm not afraid of you! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, dear me! <laughs> uh, oh! <laughs> Shoot down that, uh, butterfly! Hey! Bush Leaguers! Get out of our fortress! 
Beatrice. Oh, you're all alone now. <laughs> Go! <laughs> She's not alone. Ah, the spotted one. This is our fortress. It used to be. It's not anymore. So I've been carrying these branches for nothing? Martins, attack! You hear that? I hope you learned your lesson! And don't try to scare <laughs> me again! I can't believe this. We got beaten by the spotty and the stripy. Shame on our heads. <gasps> Look here. This is Beals's lair. Well, well, I've got an idea. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet. Mmm, raspberry. Nice, sweet raspberry. Lots of it. Lots of it. And then Mila screams, attack them! <laughs> Did you see me? I grabbed one of them, boom, and that was it. The fight was over, and I'm like, don't you come back. <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> Leo, we should run. Scared much? That'll teach you not to get in our way. It's our meadow now, with raspberries and everything. So, hey, guys, does it mean that our meadow and our fortress, all of that is gone? Calm down, Mila. We'll get it all back. Yeah, sure we will. Wait, Leo, did you see it? We're not strong enough. We can't beat Beals. I think I know someone who can help us. Uh, dear Mr. Beals, uh, we, we had a deal that half of the raspberries would be ours. Okay, okay. We get it. We totally get it. We do. We totally do. We're leaving already. Run! <laughs> 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 oh, no, kids. <laughs> I'm a bit too old to fight the brown bear. You were our only chance to beat him. Leo, let's give up and go to the river. Wait a minute. Mappa Pandiga, so there's no animal in the forest stronger than the brown bear? <laughs> Once upon a time, brown bears had no reason to doubt that. There was no animal stronger than them. So the brown bear grew vain and started to abuse his power, doing bad things. But for every power, there's an even stronger power. The spirit of the tiger always has his children's back. What do we do now? Search for the spirit of Tyga again so he chases Beals away? No. We'll get him ourselves. Okay. Mila, I need you to distract Beals. And Cuba, sneak up on his right side. <laughs> you. Tig. Look at who decided to visit us. Shush! That glutton kicked us out. He promised to share the raspberries with us. <laughs> Let me guess he didn't. Sure enough! Okay. Right now, we need to join forces and chase him away. Well, are you with us? For sure. We're with you. 
But we go 50-50 on the raspberries. <laughs> Right, we found it first. <laughs> oh! Who do you think you are destroying our fortress? Go away right now! Oh, I get it. You want to show me something? You're home. Why don't you go back inside? Oh, I see. There's something blocking it. Mm, yeah. Don't sting me now. <laughs> are you saying thank you? Huh? Mila's in danger! Bees, will you help me? Please? <laughs> Throw more! Throw more! Oh, we ran out of pine cones! Ouch! <sighs> oh no! Yes, he came here to help us. <laughs> but how did he know? That's right, run away. Go on, run faster. The spirit of Tiger's gonna get you. <laughs> Bye, bees. Thank you for helping. You go defeat another enemy. For his valor and outstanding flying, Marty is rewarded with a delicious raspberry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these are good raspberries. <laughs> the Eagle Rock. <laughs> all right, all right, Tig, you beat me. Come on, get off. You're really squishing my tail. Yay! Woohoo! Tig is the winner. Tig is the strongest. <laughs> Tig, King, King of the, the Tiger. tiger. <laughs> Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Mappa Pandiga. Good morning, Mappa Pandiga. Good morning, children. Leo and I are just playing. <laughs> playing what? King of the Tiger. Tig's the king. <laughs> <laughs> yes. The Amur Tiger once earned the right to be called the King of the Tiger. Just like the white shouldered eagle is the King of the Sky. The King of the Sky? I've never really heard of him. Tell us the story, Mappa Pandiga. Pretty, pretty, please? <sighs> it was a long time ago. There was no order among the bird folk. The strong would wrong the weak, and no one was there to stand up for them. Then, the birds got together and decided to choose themselves a king who would be kind, strong, and fair. The choice fell on the eagle. But, the jealous vulture cried out, He needs to prove that he's the strongest. Let's have a competition. He who's the first to get to the top of a high mountain at sunrise will become the king. And so it was set. But at night, the vulture stole the eagle's wings, put them on, and flew to the summit. But when the sun came up, it scorched the sneaky vulture and made him turn black. And the eagle received a pair of new wings from the sun. Thus he became white-shouldered. And that's how they've been ever since. The white-shouldered eagle, the king of the sky, and the black vulture who was left to feed on nothing but carrion. Mappa Pandiga, so where... Where did those old eagle wings go? I don't know. Probably still somewhere on the Eagle Mountain. 
All right, kids, that's enough for today. I've got things to do. Tig, do you want to go for a walk? Walk where? Well, nowhere special, really. Just wander around a bit. I'm pretty good right here. Leo, what are you up to? Come on, King of the Taiga! Just a little more! Yeah, so what? It's nothing special. Of all the places to wander, you want to come here? What's the big deal? No big deal. But there are no wings lying around in other places. What are you saying? Come on, Tig. We're climbing the Eagle Mountain. Are you insane? It's the highest, most dangerous mountain, period. Leo, Tig! Oh boy, they're about to fall. Uh, I must call everyone for help. Uh, uh, Grandpa, I'm gonna do a run up and soar into the air. Oh, it's such a pity that you won't be able to see it. A run? <laughs> <laughs> that one doesn't count. This time I'm definitely gonna fly. <laughs> of course you're gonna fly. You're an eagle. It's just that, well, you're not ready yet. But I feel like I'm ready. A run, a jump. Elder Eagle. We've just seen a leopard and a tiger on the mountain, climbing to the top. Wow, awesome! I wonder what they're doing here. We'll find out soon enough. Leo, why do we even need wings? They're not that great. Think about it! Once you get yourself some wings, you can become not just the king of the... Tiger, <sighs> but of the sky too. Why should I care about the sky? I'm perfectly fine with a taiga. Tig, uh, push uh, it closer to the rock. Leo, you're kicking up too many rocks. It's not me. It's a stone fall. Uh, uh, uh. Yeah, otherwise we'd be crushed by those stones. Tell me this. What business has brought Wingless to our mountain? We... we just wanted to find ourselves some wings so that Tig could become a real king of the sky. <laughs> king of the sky? Having wings is not enough for that. Uh, I've got wings right here. When do I become the king? It's the vultures! How dare they show up at our beautiful mountains! Don't worry, sir. We'll take care of them. You better leave this place now and hurry. Well, old man. Long time no see, as they say. <gasps> Grandpa, that's the black vulture! Ah. It's you! I've thrown you out of these mountains more than once before! <laughs> yes, but this time your guardians are far away, and you've become a feeble, lame, and blind old geezer! <laughs> Grandpa! Grandpa! Let the young one go! No, I will not! Say goodbye to your little hatchling! No, Grandpa! Stay here! I'll be right back. Me. Leo, let go. wait. Hey, you. Let him go ah. right now. And who's this little nuisance? Grab him. <laughs> no, Leo. No, 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 no. Goodbye, Grandpa. old man. Grandpa Eagle, we need to save them. My wings are still very strong and powerful, but I'm blind. I know. 
I can be your eyes and I'll guide you. You, who were born without wings, are not scared of flying? Oh, I'm really scared, but we can't abandon them. Let's go! To the left. To the right. A bit more. Aha! We've almost caught up with them. He slipped into a ravine. Ah, uh, the passage is too narrow. I spent my entire life among these incredible mountains. I know every blessed rock here. Initiate the countdown! Three, two, one, and go! Whoa, yeah! That was awesome! We've caught up with them! You wretched old man! I underestimated you! But you won't get them! The vultures back. dropped them! They're falling! We have to catch them! Go down! For me. Can we land? So you are saying that they were climbing on the Eagle Mountain? Oh, I really shouldn't have told Leo and Tig that Eagle legend. Oh dear. Look! There! What's that way up above? That's Leo! <gasps> and Tig! They're flying! Grandpa! This way! <laughs> land now! <laughs> thank you. Oh, no. I should thank you, brave-hearted tiger. You are a king indeed. A king? Who? Tig? Come visit us when you can. We'll always be glad to see you. For sure. We'll fly you around. Grandpa, follow me. Let's go home. Flying? Well, uh, thanks, but <laughs> that's okay. I think I'll. Well, pass. then, King, you want to play tag? You're it. Forget about it, Mila. I'm no king. Ha! Reels it! Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> it's not those who are strong and cunning who inspire tales, but those who are brave and kind. Four, An old five, friend. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, no, eleven, here I'll be found 12, right away. 13, 14, 15, this won't work either. 16, oh, so where should I hide? 19, 20, 24, 25, and I'm done counting. Ready or not, here I come. All right. Leo, here I come! Wow, this is a sweet hiding spot. Tig will have to look for me till nightfall. <laughs> Leo, there you are. Cool. Let's do it again. Totally. <laughs> Leo, where'd you get this nest anyway? From a tree. <laughs> Where else? But what if this 
nest belongs to somebody. Well, you know, the nest is empty. And if it's empty, it means it's abandoned. <laughs> Leo, Tig, Mop is waiting. Yeah, we're coming. Just a second. Tig, let's just put it away now and come back later for more riding. All right. Push it this way. You don't hurry. I'm going to leave without you. <sighs> Mila, wait for us. Okay, so today I'm going to tell you quite an amazing story. Hey ho! Hey ho! Hey ho! When the wind above the sea waves, when the wind above the sea waves, when the wind above the sea waves starts to storm and rage, we will scare it off with shouts. Mappa, who's that flying over there? The crows? <laughs> You're a crow, Mila. <laughs> they are eagles. Easy, easy, children. <laughs> Don't fight. Those are storks. They are coming back to their nests after the winter. Hey ho! Hey ho! Hey ho! We're going home, my friend. <laughs> it's so wonderful to see an old friend when you come back home. And who is that? Children, I want you to meet Theodore. An old friend of mine, a stork. Mr. Theodore, was it a difficult journey? Well, as they say in the far land of China, the journey to your family nest begins with a single wing stroke. You know what, children? I'm going to tell you the story of the stork. Go, oh, wow. I'd be happy to hear that too. All right then. Once upon a time, there lived a stork. Was he all alone? Yes, all alone. All by his lonesome in his giant nest. But then the stork decided to find himself a girlfriend. One day, high in the sky, right under the clouds, he saw a beautiful lady. Only it turned out that this beautiful lady is the daughter of the strongest wind who didn't want to share her with anyone. The wind came down and pulled the stork's nest apart. But the stork wasn't about to give up. He built a new nest, much stronger than the previous one. And that's when the wind realized that the stork is a worthy fiance for his daughter, persistent and courageous. Ever since that time, storks come back to their nests every year, and the families they build last for their entire lives. Mr. Theodore, do you also have a girlfriend? Well, a stork with a nest has everything. You know what? Come visit me. It's close on the top of that hill. Tig. I have a bad feeling that the nest we found might have an owner after all. Really? And who is he? The nest is gone. Wha what do you mean, gone? Completely gone! Maybe the wind blew it away. No wind could do that! It was the sturdiest nest in the entire taiga! Oh, no, no, no. My Theodora's gonna be here any minute. Oh, you haven't seen her angry. That's it. It's all over. Don't you worry, sir. We'll help you. Leo and I will find it in no time. Let's go, Tig. Leo, where's the nest? How should I know? It used to be here. Weird. It couldn't have just disappeared, could it? Stop! Do you hear that? <laughs> That's so awesome! <laughs> Did you see the shorty fly out? <laughs> come on, come on, come on! Let's go! Let's push it up! Come on! Hurry up! Push! Push! Come on, let's go! Hey, you! 
Give us back our nest. Your nest? <laughs> hey, Martins, did you hear that? Oh, yeah. The spotty and the stripey make nests now. <laughs> I can't even believe it. It's not yours or ours, but the nest does have an owner. Give it back. <laughs> right, first, catch us if you can. <laughs> We're asking nicely. Give it back. Tig, we're in so much trouble. Oh, no, no, no. Is this all that's left of my nest? No, no, no. Children, you should be ashamed. We didn't throw it down from the tree. They did. That's right. They did. <laughs> That's a great way to put it. Mappa, we were just playing hide and seek and then it fell down. I didn't mean to. And then we just thought that it had no owner. We are very sorry. Yeah. We're very sorry. Please forgive us. Wise men would say that there can only be a wrong path, but never a hopeless situation. But this is the end. Ah, oh, children, children. Mappa Pantiga, we're gonna fix everything. Oh, listen, guys. I've got an idea. Leo, is this one nest material? For the roof? Sure. And these? Just perfect. Put them there. Okay. Right. Mike, let the spotty and the stripey do the work. That's right. What are we here for? Stop asking and start collecting. All right. A little more. Okay, and one more. Good. Mila, you need to stop. It's already pretty. Tig, call him. Okay. Ooh. It's done. Come and have a look. <laughs> the creeks bring more light, and following spring, I also came back. It's such a surprise. Hmm. Oh, this is so romantic. Uh, <laughs> well then. Want a race? The first one to that bush wins! Come on! Going on the count of three. One, two, three! three. Hey, wait! That's not fair! <laughs> the Rise of the Dragon. Tig, don't be such a bore. Join our race. Yeah, Tig. Up to the cedar on the top and back. I have more important things to do. I'm gonna wait for you down here. So, <laughs> the stripey's scared. <laughs> Just you wait. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Whatever. Go on, Mila, give us a command. On your mark, get set, go! against wings. Well, that's interesting. <laughs> Leo! Leo! Kino! 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 Kino, you've got really fast wings. <sighs> okay, let's see who's the first to get down. So, Tig, looks 
like the spotty got himself a new friend who is not a coward, unlike you. A coward? <laughs> Me? Look, look over there! They're coming! Oh, isn't Kino amazing? Flying like that? Kino's great. Kino's awesome. That's all I hear these days. Kino this, Kino that. No, you too, Mila. <laughs> Leo traded Tig for the winged one. <laughs> Did you hear that, Cuba? Let's get out of here. Sure, go. The spotty doesn't need you anymore. You're no match for that feathery guy. <laughs> I'm first. <laughs> wow. Tig, Cuba, where are you going? We don't have time. Cuba and I have more important things to do. We could come up with something more interesting than stupid racing. What's up with that? Something bugging him? It's not exactly bugging, so much as pecking. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Oh, I don't know. The earth is kind of trembling. Oh. Let's go to Mapa Pandiga. I bet he might know what's going on. Oh, they say that once before, a long time ago, the Earth would shake the same way. And here's what happened. The Great Mount, the one on the east, was friends with the wind. The Mount really liked it when the wind would shake the tops of its pines. But one day, the wind flew up higher and started to play with the clouds. That made the mount angry. Suddenly, the sky turned dark. And then he, he appeared. Who? The dragon. The dragon? Yes, giant like a mountain and ruthless like fire. No animal could get the best of it. But how? How was he stopped then? The wind. It flew close to the dragon, and not alone. He brought along some clouds. They started whirling and dancing around. The dragon then calmed down and turned back into the Great Mount. The clouds wrapped it in a white blanket, and the dragon fell asleep. No! Tig, let's go! All fly ahead! Guys, where are you going? Dragon woke up! <laughs> <laughs> we need to run! <laughs> the, 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 oh, the dragon! The dragon woke up! Oh, and here I thought Leo was my best friend. He's all... Kino, let's have a race! Kino, you're such a great flyer! <clears throat> Oh, Leo, Leo. Hey, you! <laughs> what dragon? On the mountain! He woke up! Everyone's afraid of him! Everyone except me! I'm gonna go there and have a look. Check out this dragon. You coming with me? Fine, whatever. I'm gonna go there alone. Then everyone will see that I am brave. The stripey lost his mind. Going right into the dragon's mouth. Martins, let's go. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah. Where is Tig? Where could he go? Cuba, where's Tig? Mountain. Tig went up the mountain? But why? Well, where is this dragon? I'm gonna show him what's what. And after I'm done with this dragon, we'll see what Leo has to say. He'll probably be like, Tig, pretty please, let's play together. And I'll be like, no, Leo, go play with your Kino. Ah! So that 
That's the dragon! He woke up! Where's Tig? Hurry up! I've seen Tig! He's over there! Why did I climb here? Tig! Leo! We're here! Jump over! Tig! A boulder's coming! Tig! Watch out! Tig! Tig! Give me your paw! No, Leo. I don't need your help. You don't need me anyway. Leo, why are you... What are you doing? You're my friend. If you die, I die with you. Friend? I thought now you were only friends with Kino. Tig, come on. We've been together since childhood. Wherever you go, I go too. Leo, it's all my fault. And I was really rude to Kino. I'm so sorry, friend. <gasps> Tig, look at that. Whoa. Leo, it's all quiet now. Do you think that means the dragon fell asleep? Yeah. Now we need to figure out how to get out of here. Oh. Hang on there, guys! I brought help! Grab the line, children. Climb up! And then Leo jumped to me and said, wherever you go, I go too. And then I realized that I was wrong. Ugh. And then the wind and the clouds and the dragon fell asleep again. Mappa Pandiga, why did the dragon fall asleep again? <laughs> I think, kids, it's because Tig got the best of the dragon. What? The dragon? But I haven't even seen him. <laughs> Yay! Tig is the dragon slayer! Who? Me? Really? Well, yes, actually. <laughs> hey, <laughs> Dragon Slayer, time to go home. Kino, come by tomorrow. I know a really fun game. We can play it together. Right. Play Dragon. No! Anything but Dragon! <laughs> come on, Leo. I swear I didn't get scared one bit. If this dragon ever comes my way! <laughs> Every one of us has a dragon sleeping inside, and only you yourself can get the best of him. Tig! Try to keep up! I am keeping up. I just... I wanted to breathe some fresh air. I've heard it's good for your health. In that case, can you breathe a bit faster? We're running late for Mappa. Hi there, Mila. Oh, hi, guys. Perfect timing. I had a nut roll under these roots. Can you help me get it out? Pretty please. Mila, have you seen the size of my paws? Look! They're huge. They won't fit in there. Mila, sorry, but Mappa is waiting for us. We'll definitely help you, but later! <laughs> the story of a hero.
So today, children, I'm going to tell you the story <laughs> about the Nightingale's song. But Mappa Pandiga, Nightingales again? Can you tell us something heroic? That's right, like about battles and stuff. <laughs> heroic. <laughs> about battles and stuff. Okay, I've got something for you. It took place a long time ago. Back then, all animals in the forest lived peacefully together. No one hurt anyone. But then, something bad happened. From a faraway land, a great pack of wolves came to the taiga. The wolves were vicious and bloodthirsty and pestered the lives of the forest residents. The animals lost their peace. They got together for a council to decide who was going to defend their home forest. But no one dared to challenge the fierce wolves. Only one animal, the strongest, fastest, and bravest of all, stood up to the wolves. The battle continued throughout the night. It was tough on our hero, but he never backed down and chased the wolves out of the forest. Woohoo! He really showed them wolves. Huh. Oh, Mappa Pantiga. So who was that hero? A leopard, right? Why would you think it's a leopard? It was a tiger for sure. Some say it was a leopard. Some talk about a tiger. It was a long time ago. Well, children, go now, and I'm gonna have a nap. Tig, let's play the hero game. Okay, Tig, I'll be the hero, and you'll be the wolf. Go ahead, try to howl. <clears throat> How? No, that's not working. It doesn't sound like a wolf. It sounds like a chipmunk. You are the chipmunk. Chipmunk. <gasps> Tig, try to howl in here. Wow! <laughs> Hold on, how come I have to be the wolf? I want to be the hero. Oh no, the hero was a leopard. But Mappa said that... Mappa just didn't want to get you upset. Maybe he didn't want you to get upset. Everyone knows that the hero was a tiger. Because tigers are stronger than leopards. Stronger, whatever. The leopard is agile. No, I disagree. I play the hero or not at all. Tig, let's make a deal. Whoever's the first to the top gets to be the hero. Okay, you got a deal. Hey, that's not fair! Well, don't be so slow then. <laughs> Try and catch up! <laughs> Wanna give up? Lil! Wait here, I'll be right back. I need to show Tig who the real hero is, and then I'll come back. Mila, have you seen Leo? Yeah, he ran that way. Tig, will you help me? This is a bad time, Mila. I need to beat Leo first, then I'll come back. Stay where you are, don't go anywhere. How could I go anywhere? <laughs> Look at that! A weasel! Poor thing got trapped! Shall we help her? Uh-huh, yeah! And also have a lunch! <laughs> well, who's the hero now? Huh? Well, hero, wanna give up? Heroes never 
never give up. <laughs> I should go first. <laughs> about angry and hungry <gasps> boss they're here it's definitely wolves all right let's leave it's better to stay out of their way <laughs> you got lucky weasel uh, oh, oh, oh. this time <laughs> Leo, you have to be very careful. Wolves are coming. It's okay, Mila. There are no wolves. It was all taking me. Ooh. Oh! Ooh. <gasps> you sounded just like real wolves. <laughs> I even got a little bit scared. <laughs> And here's that nut. Thank you, guys. You know, you are my heroes. Tig, I've got an idea. Maybe the hero that chased away the wolves wasn't alone. Maybe there were two of them? Yeah, that's right. A tiger and a leopard. We can both be heroes. And Mila can be the wolf. Let's go play. <laughs> hey, why me? <laughs> Be the wolf? Wait, guys! Come on! That's not fair! Leo! Tig! Goodbye, Theodore. So, have you come up with an interesting question? I spent all night thinking, but I still have nothing. I've got a question! But. I forgot it. Hi, Theodore. Do you also want to listen to Mappa? No, oh, no, my friends. I just wanted to say goodbye. 
to say goodbye? Ah, it's September already. Today at sunset, our flock is flying off to the warmer lands. Over there, at the Blue Hills, is where we meet. Whoa, it's so far. You call this far? The warmer lands, that's really far away. Several days of a strenuous flight through heat and cold. Through winds and storms. All right, children. What questions have you prepared for me? Today, as promised, I will answer the most interesting one. Who's up? So what? No questions. I've got one! Mappa Pandiga, why do storks fly to the warmer lands for the winter? Good one, Leo! <laughs> wonderful. That is an interesting question indeed. A long time ago, back at the dawn of time, the weather was always hot on Earth. But then, the climate began to change, and animals started to dress in furs and feathers. Those who chose feathers learned how to fly and became birds. Later, it turned out that the feathers are not good for keeping you warm in winter. But the birds didn't want to give up their plumage. They wouldn't trade this new and magical feeling of flying for any fur coat, no matter how warm or beautiful. That's why, ever since that time, every year, many birds have to fly far, far away to the warmer lands where they can stay till the harsh winter is over. I'm so glad I've got my fur coat. There's no way I'd be flying to the warmer lands. Oh, so pretty. Where did it come from? That is Theodore's feather. But without it, how can he fly to the warmer lands? We need to return it. Give his feather back. Can we make it? We don't have any other choice. In that case, let's go, guys. Think of something. No, Leo. Just no. Why not? Jump now, Tig. Don't be scared. I'm gonna jump first. Okay. As a gentleman, I'll let you go first. Huh? Woo! <clears throat> oh, wow! Why did I never jump like that before? <laughs> Woo! But this is so high. Leo, I can't do this. I'll just wait here. All right, Tig, stay there if you want. But could you catch the vine first? Good job, Tig! Jump now! Get me out of here, Leo! Hold on! Hold on tight! Tig! Tig! I'm coming! just got caught on a thorn, so he couldn't jump off. That's right. Caught on a thorn.
Oh, the fog is so thick. I can't see anything. That's it. They're leaving soon, and apparently we're lost. <sighs> what about Theodore? The feather! The feather! Grab it! Quickly! Ugh, what good is it now? We're late anyway. There's no way out of this fog. The magic feather! It's trying to show us the way! We're running fast to help a friend We always stick together And when we cannot find our way Please guide us, Magic Feather And if you are in trouble, friend Don't worry, don't be sad We'll always come to help you out And things won't be so bad Then let them say that birds and beasts Can never get along The friendship has no boundaries We love you, Theodore Through the darkest woods, through fogs and rains and more. We'll cross the fastest rivers to, to get to Theodore. We're running fast to help a friend, we always stick together. And when we cannot find our way, please guide us, Magic Feather. <laughs> That's really funny, Theodore. You're friends with a tiger, a leopard, and a lynx. I don't believe you. Where could he go? Leo! Yara! I have really bad luck today. First, I got caught in a thorn, and now I fell into this deep pit. I'm so sick of vines. Wonderful friends. We made it! <laughs> we found your feather. You lost it, right? Yeah, this is my feather. But why? I think you can't fly without it. Oh, no, Tig. One feather wouldn't affect the way I fly in the slightest. So we came for nothing? No, not at all. I'm so happy, my friends. Hey, you came to say goodbye before I leave. And this feather is for you to remember me. Goodbye! And good luck, Theodore! <laughs> <laughs> when the wind above the sea waves, when the wind above the sea waves, when the wind above the sea waves starts to storm and rage, we will hear it. With shouts. We will scare it up with shouts. We will scare it up with shouts and continue on our flight.